Hey guys, Dov here with some more Total War Warhammer 2 tournament action. Today we get back to the Aliab Bros tournament. I had proceeded from the first round winning against Alric Ral. Now I'm matched up against Hyale Nale, who uh, in the last ever chosen uh, got second place against Felcon. So definitely a very strong opponent here. He's gone with his Lizardmen and I've gone with the Empire. We're here on the uh, Warp Stone Crater. I forget exactly. I think that's the name of this one. But anyway, to the builds, we've got four Outriders, a Veteran Spears, five of them with the Sigmar's Sons, a Hellblaster Volley Gun, a Light Wizard, and Marcus, which technically is a rule break, but we'll get to that in just a minute, um, Demigriff Knights, and a Warrior Priest. As for the Lizardmen, we've got multiple units of Pterodon Riders here. Three units of Pterodon Riders, looks like, including one of them is the Pawhawks. Yep, over on the side. Skink Chief on a Pterodon. Haven't seen one of those in a while, but still pretty solid. Million skinks. We've got a solar engine. Uh, looks like Crocky G up in the air. Cohort of Sotek. Source warriors. Skink priest. Lore of heavens. So, yeah, right off the bat, we're going to be using the uh, Hellblaster to just go after whatever targets. Primarily, if we can, Chameleon skinks is the thing I was uh, thinking of shooting at. We've got a few right here. So, yeah, you can see Marcus getting blasted by the solar engine there. And Hellblaster are going to open up on the Chameleon Skinks here. I find that the Hellblaster is very good at shooting at these loose formation infantry. Skinks, because they have high missile resistance, the high missile damage of the Hellblaster is enough to just about one-shot their unit models. Not quite. It still does quite a bit of HP damage there. Uh, certainly more so than the Outriders would shooting at them. Uh, the Outriders here are going to now all to shoot these Pterodon Riders, which have been netted. Technically, this is a rule break. I... Thought this was legal under the banner rules, but then we weren't even using banner rules. And anyway, that was just pretty clearly a rule break. But uh, yeah, the Light Wizard here with uh, Nets, Boss Protection, and Baronis Time Warp. We do manage to absolutely wreck that unit of Pterodon Riders. The other one, the Pahawk Sentinels here, also just going to get multi-crossfired here by the uh, Outriders. And you can see how I've kind of got them all spread out so they're not stacked on top of each other. They can get effective crossfire. Meanwhile, over here, uh, Marcus is having a skirmish fight with the Skink Chief, which is definitely going to go in Marcus's favor. Got the Chameleon Skinks picking away at these Veteran Spears, which is not the best, but it's also not the worst. Umbral Tide coming up and around here. Hadn't highlighted them earlier, but I guess they were stocked to me. <laughs> yeah, the Demigriff Knights with the Warrior Priest is going to come in here, try and push them away. We do take a little bit of fire on the approach. Not the best, but... We're going to be able to pressure them away, get some shots with the Hellblaster as well to kind of pick at their HP a little bit there. Not super effective damage, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pull back there. Don't want to get too far out of position. Definitely want to try and stick to my guns as much as possible here. We do shatter the other unit of Pterodon Riders, so we're just about done with enemy air units. Not quite. The uh, Pawhawk Sentinels did come back and are still picking away at my Demigriff Knights, doing some nice HP damage there. But here, I'm going to make a pretty... Big mistake potentially. I was thinking with Barona's Time Warp that these uh, Outriders would beat the Chameleon Skinks in melee. They do go up to 42 melee attack, 43 ish. But unfortunately, their melee defense is not that great. And what it also does is it bunches them up so that Solar Engine can shoot in. Now, the Solar Engine obviously applies the blind debuff. And because this, the area of effect for Barona's Time Warp is stationary, they actually very quickly run out of the area of effect. And so it ends up just being a net loss for me. And these four Outriders actually lose out here and are all going to get routed off the side to this one Chameleon Skink. One of them we did manage to route. Um, I don't even know if they're going to go off the side, though, to be honest. And the Skink Chief and the Solar Engine, the Javelins come in as well to do a ton of free damage. And suddenly, a big part of the killing power of my army is gone, more or less. And that's not great. Likewise, Krokgar comes in with a Hand of the Gods, just blasts Marcus there, does a ton of HP damage. So... Marcus is consistently getting worn down as well. And it's uh, not looking super great. The Hellblaster, though, thankfully, has been able to get a lot of work done. Been uh, chewing up these, uh, yeah, the solar engine here. Now I'm going to switch it onto the infantry as they start to advance here. Break them up on some of the state troops. Marcus is continuing to fire as well. But now these skinks that I failed to break on the side with my outriders here are going to be pressuring up and around the flank. Potentially getting in on this Hellblaster Volley Gun. I do need to protect it for as long as possible. Didn't quite get them before they got in Javelin range. They still toss their Javelins, but thankfully all three Hellblasters stay online. We're going to be able to pour in some fire onto the flank of these Saurus here. Beautiful Wind Blast, though. Just rips through my state troops here. Does a ton of HP damage, especially the Sigmar Sons as they match up against the Cohort of Sotek. That's going to be really painful. 
will definitely swing the fight in the cohort of Sotek's favor. Meanwhile, over here, I'm a little bit late with my buffs on the Demigriff Knights. I do some damage to Krokar, but not nearly as much as I needed to for the cost here. My Warrior Priest takes a ton of damage, and yeah, it's not great. Those Spearmen, though, should be able to get some damage in on the Saurus while they've got that melee attack, at the very least. Marcus and the uh, Light Wizard are doing okay dealing with the Skinks, but I don't necessarily want to stay here for too long. We're going to throw a big Verona's Time Warp to hit a bunch of these units as they try and struggle against the Skinks and Saurus. Maybe do a little bit of extra damage, but the Pterodon Riders and the Chameleon Skinks coming in to finish off the Hellblaster crew. Again, another one of my ranged tools being shut down here. And it did get quite a lot of work done, honestly paid for itself already, but still I needed that into the late game. Marcus is also getting continuously whittled down by these uh, counter range tools. And Krokar is still healthy enough. The rest of the Lizardman army is getting pretty thin. I mean, I guess these two units of Soros are still relatively healthy. But uh, yeah, could potentially be an issue for me. Uh, the balance power is starting to turn slightly against me. And we do manage to finish off the Solar Engine out in the distance. Catch Krokar on some spears and then get a little bit of a rear charge here with these Demigriff Knights. But Krokar, such an OG, absolute powerhouse of a combatant. Uh, especially with Harmonic Convergence. You're gonna, gonna even get a little bit of extra armor there to help against the Spearmen. It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> with the uh, friendly fire of the Salamanders as well, the Umbral Tide, he'll be able to win that engagement pretty decisively. And we do finish off the Skink Chief finally with a little bit of an aimed shot there. Blasting himself is the Skink Priest, so we'll maybe keep things a little bit close while that goes, but only a handful of state troops here. Marcus is maybe going to get caught and killed potentially here, so I have to burn a net to escape from those Soros Warriors because they have such thick mass. Really can't pull through them very effectively, but we'll see. Warrior Priest comes back, gets some damage in on these Soros, but he's going to now get absolutely killed by Krokar. So yeah, that's, uh, that's not the best. And the Spearmen over here are catching the Umbral Tide a little bit, keeping them from being able to just uh, get set is nice for me uh continuing to pressure them try and stay on them as much as i can but it's not looking great spearmen with shields having to come back in the fight try and maybe break out some of these units a hand of the gods barely misses marcus get one more baronis time warp here for this spearman making their final stand but they're about to get rear charged by saurus so i don't expect them to hold up for much longer and yeah unfortunately i do think that the outriders <laughs> throwing them into melee something i'm known to do with my outriders and pistoliers um, yeah, it ended up costing me, I think, the game there. If I would have had those tools, it may have made the difference in, like, taking down Krokar, for example. Honestly, the right call, I think, would have been to probably net them, and then rather than charging, to switch, um, like, all of the range tools onto them at once. Uh, like, the Hellblaster plus the Outriders, I think, together would be able to just shoot them, even though they do have a good amount of missile resistance, you know, being caught out from all the support there. Uh, or also charging in with the Demigriff Knights, which, I mean, granted, they were kind of up operating in this area. A little bit busy at that time. But, uh, yeah. Lizardmen end up taking the day there, so very well played to Hyalinale. Nice to see the Hellblaster get some work done, though. I would say that was absolutely the bright spot of this army. It was able to do a ton of damage to Chameleon Skinks, do, did a ton of damage to, uh, you know, the Solar Engine. Basically took, out, took it out single-handedly, just about... Um, did pretty good damage to Soros as well. Two XP chevrons, not bad at all. But uh, just wasn't quite enough at the end of the day. The Outriders almost paid for themselves, but yeah. I mean, three three Terradon Riders versus four Outriders is not quite good enough. And uh, yeah, if we'd just been able to get a little bit more value, maybe like shooting at Krokar or even the uh, Soros Warriors might have made the difference there. And yeah, apologies about the uh, double net there. Rule break. I, uh, for some reason, I was thinking that because of the banner rules that you can take two warp grinders, that it was just two nets. Then I forgot that we weren't using the banner rules. We were using the cup rules. And anyway, there's some minor differences there. But uh, yeah, um, you could definitely just cut the nets. I think I'd probably cut the nets on Marcus, to be honest, just to make him a little bit cheaper since the net of Amantok is actually... I don't know, actually. His is Winds of Magic Free, so maybe I would cut that and just go with purely the buff spells for the Light Wizard. Um, and then, yeah, with the extra gold, you could do some various things. Maybe try and uh, put some chevrons on these Demigriff Knights here. I don't know. Put a chevron or two on the Hellblaster so it has a bit better refire and accuracy from the beginning. But, yeah, it's definitely a fun battle. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. It's definitely a fun matchup. It's one that I it seem to struggle with more so than a lot of other Empire matchups. And that's not necessarily because it's a bad matchup for the Empire, but it's just more so my playstyle doesn't match up super well 
against the Lizardmen because I tend to play more of an offensive cavalry style. This sort of missile defense type thing is not really my wheelhouse. I'm getting a bit better at it, but uh, yeah. Very well played to Hyale Nale. I'll be bringing you guys the rest of the battles in this round, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, if you want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, all that jazz, and thank you very much. We'll see you next time.